Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about converging versus diverging lenses. We're going to be comparing the, the differences between the two. Um, but in order to understand the differences be between these two lenses, um, we have to understand what refraction is. Um, I won't go into super um, deep detail about what refraction is, but basically the important aspect of it is light travels at different speeds depending on the medium that it is in. So for example, uh, light travels faster in air than it does in glass. So as it travels across here, once it hits the glass, it's gonna travel slower. Um, if we go in at an angle, this is actually gonna change the direction of the light ray. For example, if we have a light ray coming in like this, once it hits the glass, it's gonna change direction a little bit. And then once it goes back into the air, it's gonna go back to its original path. Um, now this is important um, in order to understand how converging and diverging lenses work. So let's first explain what a converging or a convex lens is. Now a converging or convex lens is gonna have this shape to it, a little bubble shape going outwards. And I drew a sun here to represent the light that's gonna go through this lens. So if we have light rays traveling across, hitting the lens, once they hit the lens, they're going to converge and come together. That's why it's called a converging lens. So the axis or the middle will just keep going, but the ones up here will come back down on themselves. And then over here, will come back down, come back up. And as we see, they will come and converge to a certain point. And this point right here, we are going to call the focal point. And another important aspect that we should know is starting from the middle to the focal point, this length right there, that is F or the focal length. Um, and this value is important when we get to measuring the power of certain lenses. Um, and you can see this principle when we talk about magnifying glasses. Um, for example, here we have uh, the sun again shining onto a magnifying glass. And as the rays go perpendicular and hit this converging lens or magnifying glass, the axis line is going to keep going. And these lines are going to go up and converge to that focal point again, right? So we have this focal point. Now the power of a magnifying glass is determined by this length right here that focal length. Um, now, if we have a magnifying glass that's more powerful, um, these light rays are gonna, same, travel perpendicular right into the, into the lens, but the lens is gonna be stronger or more powerful, and it'll converge closer, right down here. That becomes our new focal point. And this length, F, is our focal length still. Um, now how we measure this is a simple equation. That is, our power is equal to the inverse of this length. So as you can see, as the focal length gets larger, our power is going to be less. And when we talk about power, it's not... Uh, we're not talking about watts or anything like that. We're talking about the strength of this lens. And the units on this is the units D, which is just the inverse of meters. Like that. All right, so that's basically everything for power. Um, now we're going to talk about diverging lenses or concave lenses. Um, this is different than our converging lens because as you can see the lens kind of 
dives in on itself. I like to think of a cave. A cave goes inside, so a concave lens looks like this. <clears throat> so we're going to have our light rays traveling into this lens. Now, as opposed to our converging lens, these light rays, because of the difference in the medium, are going to diverge like this. And um, the important thing about the diverging lenses is on this side, the, the light rays are never going to overlap. So in order to find the focal point, we need to trace these lines backwards. And we'll find the focal point right here. And here, we still have our F, which is equal to focal length. Um, an important note here, um, our focal length on a diverging lens, since the focal point is on the same side as the light rays, our focal length is going to be negative. Okay, perfect. And to, I like to explain a little bit of an application um, with these diverging and converging lenses. Um, they come into, into play and are pretty important as far as glasses or context, um, how they work with our eye. So here we have a normal eye and we'll have light rays traveling into the eye. These are all the objects that we see every day. Um, as it hits the lens of the eye right here, the lens is a converging lens. So it's gonna converge all these lights, these light rays, back to a certain point. I'm just gonna keep going. And the focal point right there is gonna hit on the back of the eye, all right on the retina. And so for a normal eye or well-functioning eye, that focal point is gonna be exactly on the retina right there. Um, however, there are some people that have nearsightedness and that basically means that you have these light rays coming in. And when they hit the lens, the lens is too powerful, like we've discussed before. So it converges these lines, these rays, too quickly. So our focal point is right there. And this is going to cause our vision to be blurry because it's our focal point isn't exactly on the, the retina. Um, but a simple way we can solve this problem is putting a concave or a diverging lens in front of our eye. Now you see as the light rays go into the diverging lens, it's going to shoot these rays a little bit outwards, a little bit outwards, going straight. And now with these light rays a little bit more spread apart, the more powerful lens is going to direct the rays exactly to the retina, right where we need it to be. Um, in contrast, a far-sighted person is one that has these light rays traveling and the lens is, is too weak, doesn't have enough power. So it converges the, the light rays, but just not enough. Messed that line up a little bit, but here's the, the focal point. And as you can see, it's it's not on the retina, so it's not going to, we're not gonna be able to see very clearly. So a simple way to fix this is we add another converging lens in front of this eye, and that'll allow us to be able to move this focal point closer to the retina. So as you can see, you have these lines They're traveling. They hit the converging lens, they dive a little bit, dive a little bit and then once they hit our eye ball lens it will keep converging and be able to converge on the retina right where we want it to be and well, that's basically how our glasses and contacts work um, hope you guys enjoyed the video that's the difference between converging and diverging lenses um, 